Hi everyone and welcome. Today we'll talk about PE and COF file formats. COF It's a format for executable, shared library and object code. Its original design was limited, no standard representation for long long data type, limited debugging capabilities, etc. Many extensions were created to overcome these limitations, XCOF, ECOF, etc. Replaced by ELF, but it is still used on Windows and some Unix-like systems. In the COF format, space is provided for debugging information. Programmers can customize the format at compile time. This format defines elements that contain information about the symbols and the sections of the program, such as data, text and BSS. And we've already covered this in the previous videos where we talk about the section of an assembly program. Now, these elements are file header, optional header information, table of section headers, raw data for initialized sections, relocation information for initialized sections, line numbers, symbol table and string table. Like this. Microsoft has taken the old COF file format and has created an extension, the PE format. The PE format is the format for executable files, DLLs, object code and much more on 32-64 bits Windows systems. It's used for executable, DLL, OCX, driver file, system file and much more. In Windows, executable files are referred to as a PE, while objects file as a COF. Now, the PE format has uh, lots of extensions. The .NET extension can invoke the CLR, while the PE32 Plus handles 64-bit code. PE files do not contain position-independent code. All addresses emitted by the compiler linker are fixed ahead of time. If preferred addresses cannot be used, the operating system will recalculate all absolute addresses adapting the code to the new values. This operation is called rebase. And that's the PE format structure. Each one of these is a section. And let's get more information about each one of this region. DOS header is for image only. It starts with MZ and it is 64 bytes large. It was introduced with DOS 2. It displays a warning message when a Windows NT program runs on DOS and you can actually change this behavior if you want. It's used by antivirus software to locate executable files in memory. Contains several fields but its last four bytes indicate where the PE file header is located. It's created during linking. PE signature is for image only, starts with a 4 byte signature that says PE. COF file header is for object and images. Contains several fields that describe CPU architecture, sides of section table, linker timestamp, offset of the symbol table, number of the symbols in the symbol table, size of the optional header, and the image type. 
basically, is this an executable or is it a system file? Is it a DLL? Is it just supposed to be running on uniprocessor or multiprocessor? Is it supposed to be on a removable media, which means that the system has to copy on a swap first? Does it contain any debug information? And so on. Optional header for image only. It describes how PE files should be managed and contains several fields, such as the magic, the version of the linker, the size of the text data BSS sections, the pointer to the entry point, which is a different concept whether we are talking about DLL or images, right? It's completely different. The entry point of a DLL it's a different from entry point of an executable. Now, the pointers to the text data BSS, the required version of the operating system, the checksum, and the required subsystem, which means that does this application need a graphical environment or does this application need just a console and so on. And that's very important. It also tells you the size to reserve in the stack for the application. And if you know about the stack buffer overflow problem, which has been explained in the previous class, you know how important this is, especially for security. Data directories array. Using the array index, the operating system knows which data directory can be found where and its size. Example of data directory, import and export table, which basically this one and this one, import and export, those are used to import and export data uh, from and to external library and then we also have base relocation table which is the concept that we've explained before the rebasing architecture specific data table thread local storage data table which is the table that store data for the uh, thread and com descriptor table addresses and size now, each directory has its own format, and they are difficult to parse. Section headers array. Each row of this table is a section header, and it is 40 bytes long. Section data contains initialized data. Cough relocation for object only describes how the section data should be modified when loaded into memory. Cough symbol table can contain cough symbol tables and Visual Studio Debug Info. Its address is in the cough header. The lay load import table for image only allows applications to delay the loading of a DLL until the first call into that DLL and many, many more. Now, let's have a look at some executable and let's try to analyze it. Using this hexadecimal reader that we've used before, now we're gonna analyze a, a Windows application, a Windows PE file. Now, um, we use this option over here, so we get 16 octets per row and then Okay, so that's the DOS header and that's the string that you get when you try to run a Windows application on a DOS machine. You will get this, this warning over here, right? And now here, this is the PE header that terminates here and this is important because the PE header contains the entry point of the application and then the section table as you can see text, our data, data and so on and now if you go down 
you're gonna find the library that were imported okay As you can see, here it is, and another one, and so on. So you can analyze PE5 using uh, a simple hexadecimal editor and viewer. It's just more complicated. Uh, but now I'm going to show you a proper tool which is going to make your job much quicker and much easier. Regardless of the system that you have, you need to install this package over here, PEV. Uh, Windows or Linux is the same. And the application that we're going to call is this one. And then we pass the name of the application. Let's see what happens. Easy. So we get magic number. And then uh, we get timestamp and then the machine we know that is uh, is for i386 then what else we get the entry point which is generally all you need yeah this is a 32 bit application and then what else you get? You get the size of the text, data, and BSS. And then what else? Size of the image, checksum. And it, this one is telling you that this is a visual application. And then here is telling you which library are being imported and used. That's the text section and then the relocatable area data, sorry, and data in here. And yep. Now I think if you do this. Yet yeah, we are not exporting anything, but we are using external library, and that's the list. Now, if you play around with the option of uh, this application, you see that there are lots of things to, to learn, it's really interesting. And uh, I guess that will be all for today. I hope you've enjoyed my class. Uh, please uh, share, like, and subscribe to my channel. And uh, thank you very much.